We're going to be talking about the war of words between Steve Bannon and President Donald Trump. I'm going to tell you what else and who else is at play here. Well, by now you've seen it. The whole world has. It broke in The Guardian over in the UK. Steve Bannon unleashed on President Trump, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, his son, Donald Trump Jr., in an interview, parts of which Bannon and others are claiming they thought was off the record, with a far-left writer named Michael Wolf, who was given access to the White House to write a book titled Fire and Fury. Bannon called the administration's uh, behavior during the campaign treasonous, and that's simply nonsense. He was talking about the meeting at Trump Tower with a Russian lawyer. That's long been debunked. Donald Trump Jr. has spent something like 23 hours testifying before congressional committees and nothing wrong was done. A meeting is perfectly legal. Bob Bannon also went on to say things like they're going to, here's a quote, they're going to crack Don Jr. like an egg on national TV. Well, that's also false. Again, Don Jr. spent 23 hours testifying before Congress. It's not illegal to take a meeting. Not illegal to take a meeting with a Russian lawyer. There were others, uh, some other factually incorrect comments in here. Bannon uh, was alleged to have said to Wolf uh, that meetings with the Russian government uh, were improper and the FBI should have been called. But the Russian government is not who they met with. They met with a private sector attorney. It was later discovered was, it appears that she was sent there by Fusion GPS, who was being paid by the Hillary campaign. So Bannon's statements appear to be not only misguided, but factually incorrect. Well, President Trump wasted no time firing back. It was shots fired. I'm, so, I'm sure you saw his statement by now. President said, quote, Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. President Trump went on to say, and talking about Bannon, Steve had, a quote, Steve had everything to do with the loss of a Senate seat in Alabama held for more than 30 years by Republicans, of course, talking about Republican Roy Moore's law, Doug Jones in deep, deep red Alabama. The president also took a shot at Bannon for leaking. It, quote, Steve pretends to be at war with the media, which he calls the opposition party. Yet he spent his time at the White House leaking false information to the media to make himself seem far more important than he was. And the president ended with, quote, only, talking about Steve Bannon, only pretends to have had influence to fool a few people with no access and no clue whom he helped write phony books. Now, that last part was confirmed to me by people very close to the president. They said Bannon only created the illusion of having access and influence once he left the White House, but it was all nonsense. It wasn't true. They went on to say that this now debunks all that. This shows Bannon's true colors. And to paraphrase what I was told, that they were only, that, that Steve Bannon was out for Steve Bannon, not the best interests of the Trump presidency and not the best interests of America. But it wasn't only Donald Trump who attacked Steve Bannon. Donald Trump Jr. wrote a scathing tweet. Donald Trump Jr. said, quote, Steve had the honor of working in the White House and serving the country. Unfortunately, he squandered that privilege and turned that opportunity into a nightmare of backstabbing, harassing, leaking, lying, and undermining the president. Steve is not a strategist. He's an opportunist. Now, I found Bannon's comments reprehensible because when you work in the White House, when you work in any sensitive position, loyalty and confidence should be paramount. Now, I'm not saying that if you work for an administration and that administration did something improper or illegal and you're called by Congress for oversight or you're called by federal investigators, you shouldn't be forthcoming. You absolutely should because that's also part of your job. That's part of the oath you take when you're sworn into the job to uphold, protect, and defend the laws of the United States and the Constitution. But this wasn't that. These were rageful comments, apparently right after Bannon was fired from the White House to a far left journalist. And that should be off limits. You just, it shouldn't even be in your frame of reference to do that. So to me, Bannon really, really screwed up. And, and I have no use for Steve Bannon because all he's done is emboldened Robert Mueller's discredited investigation. Trump had very big wins, tax reform, the NASDAQ over 7,000 for the first time in history. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but the DOJ, Rod Rosenstein, and the Department of Justice agreed to turn over to Devin Nunez and the House Intelligence Committee after meeting with Nunez and Speaker Paul Ryan all information pertaining to the FBI's mishandling of the Hillary Clinton email case and all other potentially mishandled matters. Donald Trump's approval numbers were going up, and right on the heels of all that, this drops. That's not coincidence. So I said yesterday, I was saying it on air, and I, I was talking about it uh, on Twitter. Why didn't Steve Bannon deny it? If you didn't say these things, 
Why not deny them? And, and my speculation at the time was, well, there must be tapes. Michael Wolf, the author, must have had tapes of Steve Bannon saying the things Wolf claims Steve Bannon said. Well, today, Axios broke a story. They call it a scoop. Quote, the scoop, Wolf taped interviews with Bannon, top officials. Now, what's even more troubling are two people that I have long said I never trusted. They were never Trump. They were never friends of the administration. They were establishment hacks. Former Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus and his deputy, Katie Walsh. And when Reince Priebus went into the White House as chief of staff, he brought Katie Walsh in as an assistant. He held an assistant to the president title, deputy chief of staff title. They were leaking like cheap boats, and both of them were unceremoniously fired. Katie Walsh and then Reince Priebus a few months later. But those same sources tell me that Reince Priebus, Steve Bannon, and Katie Walsh formed an alliance. And then it got even stronger when Katie Walsh left. Priebus knew he was on the outs, and Bannon felt that he was being marginalized. They formed an even tighter alliance. And what the sources tell me, well, it's bolstered by this Axios story, because we find out that the, the author, Wolf, spent a lot of time in the White House. And that would have had to have been approved at the time by Chief of Staff Reince Ryan, Ryan Priebus, and he was given a lot of access to Bannon, which Bannon would have had to agree to. Also in the Axios piece, there's a talk of a six-hour dinner held at Wolf's townhouse in New York City, the author's townhouse, which was attended by Roger Ailes, the now deceased former head of Fox News, and Steve Bannon. Well, this guy, Wolf, was given a lot of access by Bannon, privately and professionally, and a tremendous amount of access to the West Wing by Reince Priebus. Reince Priebus, who leaked. Reince Priebus, who was never Trump all through the primary. Reince Priebus, who was behind a contested convention to rob Donald Trump of the nomination. It failed, thankfully. And now we have the Trump presidency, what I think is doing amazing things for the nation. But, but this, this underscores a bigger problem. And I think it's gotten better since General Kelly came in as chief of staff. Look, I think General Kelly's an establishment guy, not ideologically, but simply because he's a good soldier. Man rose up through the ranks of the military, very successful career. He follows the chain of command. There's a way things have always been done and General Kelly does them. I'm encouraged by that professionalism. And I don't think he's an ideologue in terms of being pro-establishment. It's just the system in which he's always worked. He doesn't know any different. But one thing General Kelly has done well is tighten up that White House ship. That boat is no longer leaking. And isn't it interesting that the leak started to taper off when Reince Priebus left the White House and ultimately ended when Steve Bannon left the White House? This is very disappointing for many of us because we saw Steve Bannon as a warrior for the new base, for the new playbook. And really, with the loss in Alabama, with him losing support of the mega-rich Mercer family, who are outstanding conservative benefactors, and with him now being declared persona non grata at the White House, I feel Steve Bannon's career is over. And in light of all the recent evidence, that's a good thing. If you like this content, if you like this analysis, please subscribe to our premium service at www.therebel.media forward slash shows. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very, very much. And don't forget, this coming Monday, January 8th, my new show, Off the Cuff Declassified, launches a full hour of this outstanding content. More of it, great guests. You're gonna love it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.